Okay, how's it going guys? Bass and Build 96 here and Mystery Tackle Box is letting me take over their YouTube channel for the day and I'm going to be showing you guys how to throw a finesse jig, when to throw a finesse jig, and how to catch more bass throwing a finesse jig. So let's just jump right into it. So first things first, I'm just going to talk about why you would want to throw a little finesse jig over like a big half ounce or three quarter ounce, either football jig or structure jig or something like that. What makes this thing stand out and just kind of what situations is this going to shine in? Okay, so for example, today we're fishing in Southwest Michigan. We're fishing super clear water. That's definitely one of the situations when you're going to want to downsize and throw a finesse jig. So we're throwing a little striking rage baby craw, three inches in size, and we're going to put this thing on this jig. And we're also going to make a little bit of a modification to the jig before we tie this up. So what I like to do when I downsize and start throwing a finesse jig is I like to trim the skirt a little bit. Uh, what I do is I cut the bottom and then I trim the sides at a little angle. That's going to be what you want your jig to look like when it's all finished. So now we have a super compact little jig. This thing is going to be absolutely killer when you're fishing super clear water like this. But well, let's get into the fishing and I'm going to give you guys some more tips as we go along here as we start catching some fish. Here we go. Oh, that was for that was a bite. That, I think that one was a weed. That one I freaking felt him on there. Oh, yikes. Okay, they're a little bit deeper, I think, then. So last time I was at this lake, I was getting them in about 15, 16 feet of water, but I just realized that the water temperature is actually up about 5 degrees. So we just moved out here slightly deeper into about 20 to 25 feet, and I just missed that fish right there. What we're essentially doing here is we're out on the main lake, and these fish are super post-spawn. Uh, I don't even know, probably, probably for the past month, month and a half, they're, they're totally done. So... They have moved off this uh, this weed edge here, and we are just slowly dragging this little finesse jig along, trying to get one of these suckers to freaking choke on it. That was the first bite of the day, and we've only been fishing for about five, 10 minutes, so hopefully we link into a few here now that we kind of figured them out. I think they're a little bit out deeper. So we're gonna fish this deeper weed edge. We're sitting in 20 foot right now, casting at about 23. See if we can get something to eat this thing now that we kind of know what's going on here. There we go. Oh, come on. There he is. Finally hooked up here with the old finesse jig. Okay, so the first spot did not pan out too well. Uh, we were fishing about the same kind of thing, just, you know, targeting one of these little weedy drops here. This one is in about 23 feet of water, so a little bit deeper, just got our first bite of the day. She actually missed it the first time and then came right back for it. That wave kind of jacked me up a little bit, but... We're throwing this finesse jig, like I said, because as you can see, we're fishing super crystal clear water, houses everywhere, super pressured lake, gets it, so many people come out and fish this lake. So they've seen dozens and dozens and dozens of jigs. So what we're basically doing here is we're downsizing, throwing something a little bit smaller that they may not have seen uh, frequently. You know, they, they may not see something this small as frequently, especially when you're fishing in like 20 to 25 feet of water. Usually people are throwing big baits, big crank baits, big worms big jigs and we're throwing this little thing down there and as you can see uh that's the kind of results you get a uh, giant 12 inch bass but now you can definitely catch big bass doing this uh in southwest michigan we're not known for having the most monstrous of bass but we might link into a few good ones today but that is kind of what we're doing here just to just to kind of start off the video here that's just kind of a, a broad overview of what's going on why we're throwing why we're throwing this finesse jig and uh you know what we're kind of trying to target here but let's see if we can get some more fish see if we get some big ones and uh hopefully oh almost yep here we go next cast actually i was like i think i feel one okay so we might have found them stacked up right here this one feels a little bit better too oh it's a pike okay so that's another thing when you're throwing a finesse jig you might catch some toothy critters as well so that was literally the next cast oh there she goes perfect I was in the middle of uh, giving my little uh, spiel about why we're throwing the finesse jig, where we're throwing it and all that, and that thing friggin' smoked it. But hopefully, like I was just saying, we catch some more. Uh, we might find them piled up right here. There's definitely some good grass down there. That's what you want to target when you're throwing this finesse jig off the brakes. And also, quick tip when you guys get a toothy critter like that, I always check your line tie. You guys can see that I have a freaking fray right there. Definitely gonna want to retie that before we catch another fish. Here we go. Oh, I oh, got him. It's a bass. Dude, that was the weirdest freaking bite of all time. It's a decent one. 
skinny little post pond fish. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier, we are fishing for post pond bass, and as you can see, this thing probably spawned out a good month ago, and she has not started to fatten up again. As you can see, she's got some issues, but we're gonna get her back in the lake here. So see you later, honey. But that is our second bass out deep, and then we also had that pike from earlier. And after we get a few more bites out deep, I'm gonna show you guys what we do with this finesse jig to fish up shallow. We're gonna go do some dock fishing and uh, skip this thing into some freaking juice, but let's catch at least one or two more out deep here and uh yeah then we'll go up shallow after that and i will show you guys the secret to fishing this finesse jig up in shallow water so another tip for finesse jig fishing or just fishing out deep in general is you want to kind of target points so this one's not as obvious as say like a big peninsula sticking off of the main lake or whatever like that but what we have right here is an underwater point so it's really really deep along this shoreline here then this big shallow point comes up around here and you have deep water out here but it cuts in so we're fishing the tip of this point. That's where I had all those bites. Then I went and fished past it. Didn't get any more bites at all. So the fish are definitely congregated right here. I flipped back around and caught that bass. So what we're gonna be doing is targeting this point, trying to catch at least one or two more fish off of it. But that's another pro tip for if you wanna catch fish out deep is you wanna to try to find some sort of irregularity. Uh, if you're just fishing along the break, like you're probably gonna catch some fish, but you're not gonna catch as many as if you find something that stands out, if you find a big, clump of grass a big pile of rocks or like this little point right here that we are fishing right now that is what you want to look for when you're fishing out deep got one another one out deep guys well, that was bass number four i think that was my next cast or maybe one cast uh after that one or two casts after that last fish another chunky one good little 14 inch fish right there but Throwing that finesse jig out deep, as you guys can see, can produce results. Uh, it took me a while to find this spot, but we, you know, we found this nice little point here, and we started catching fish. Almost every cast, I'm getting a bite now. Uh, it was definitely slow on the first spot. I got one bite, and then that was it. But not a giant by any means. But a limit full of these on this lake will probably win you some money. So definitely a decent fish. Uh, it's always just about finding that kicker, obviously, which we're gonna go up shallow. And on this lake, that's usually how you get the kicker bass. And we're gonna go try to throw this finesse jig around some docks. So stay tuned, guys. Hopefully, you guys are learning some stuff here. I mean, I'm, I'm giving away all my finesse jig secret juice. So hopefully, this is helpful for you guys. Fishing out deep is one of my favorite ways to catch them, but we're gonna go do this up shallow now. So let's go get them. Okay, so now that we got the deep bite kind of dialed in, we move it up shallow. We're gonna start fishing these docks. And uh, let me just show you the setup that I use for my finesse jigs when I'm fishing up shallow, because it's a little bit different than what I use when I fish out deep. So we're gonna go ahead and just snip this right off of here. Use the exact same jig, just to show you guys that you could fish the exact same jig, the same finesse jig for shallow or deep water presentations. And as far as setups go, there's basically two schools of thought on finesse jig fishing uh, around docks. So a lot of guys like throwing a spinning rod because it's a little bit easier to maneuver it. You could skip it pretty darn easy and uh, you don't got to worry about backlashes or anything. And that's usually what I do when I finesse jig fish. So if you want to skip around docks, you could definitely go the casting rod route. Uh, what I like to do when I do do that is throw a seven foot medium heavy one, something that's a little bit shorter so you can maneuver it around the docks pretty easily. Uh, but something that still has a little bit of backbone as well. Um, I usually do that when I'm throwing like a half ounce jig or so, but when I'm throwing these little finesse jigs, I like going spinning rod because it's a little bit hard to skip these things when you got the heavy line and that heavier rod. So this thing is going to be super easy. You could pretty much throw this thing anywhere. We've got this tied up on a seven foot medium heavy action spinning rod. This thing is going to be able to whiz in and around all these dock posts and get this thing back up under the juice that you want it to be. But let's see if we can catch some bigger bass up shallow. The deep bite was definitely still on. I mean, we just kind of figured them out and I just decided that I want to show you guys what I do in shallow water as well. So let's put this thing under some docks and see what we could get to cracking on. First cast into freaking giant. Are you kidding me? Run right at me, run right at me. And it's a freaking big one, dude. Are you kidding me? <laughs> That's just absurd. First cast with the finesse jig up shallow. Just threw it up there with this spinning rod. And we got us a big one. All right, I called it a giant. I thought it was about a three pounder when I first saw her, but that is no, no dink for this lake. That's a good two and a quarter, two and a half pounder right there. Absolute freaking chunk on that finesse jig. Literally go up here to show you guys what's going on in the shallow water and first cast get the biggest one of the day. So. We'll get her back in the water and 
hopefully find some more like that up shallow. So as you guys can see, I'm fishing a very populated lake. I think I've probably mentioned that one or two times throughout the video so far, but there's houses everywhere, there's speedboats everywhere, and the water is super clear, which is why we are throwing this little finesse jig, because these fish, they get pounded day in and day out. So many people fish this lake, and there's just so much pressure just from boats in general. That's why we're throwing this, but when you're fishing these super clear, deep water, you know, populated lakes, I always thought you had to stay clear of the docks. I was like, there's no way that a fish is gonna wanna live up in like an inch of water when there's beautiful 20 foot weedy drops out there. But as you guys can see, sometimes that is where the absolute biggest bass in the lake hang out. Uh, that's usually how the tournaments on this lake are won. Guys skipping docks and doing stuff like that. I mean, you could catch a limit out deep, but if you want to get those kicker fish, this is one of the best ways to do it. So I'm hoping that we get a couple more of these big ones up shallow here, fishing these docks. I know that that was not a giant, but for Southwest Michigan, a fish like that is going to go such a long way. If you weighed in five fish like that, you'd win almost any single tournament on this lake. So that's kind of what we're going for here. If we get like a three or four pounder, that's just an absolute slaunch. Oh, something just hit that on the fall slack line i just felt that one get slammed but we're fishing up shallow around these docks uh flipping it around the edges and skipping it up underneath them and hopefully we get some more big bass because i'm thinking that this might be the deal today we got these high sunny skies these fish are going to want to push back up underneath this uh super shady cover they're going to either do that or be off those weedy drops that's that's basically their two options they're not going to want to be cruising around up on the flats and stuff they're either going to be up underneath these docks or they're going to be off that drop where we were catching some as well so hopefully we get into them here we've only fished about two docks and we caught our biggest one of the day so far so i'm thinking this might be lights out up by these docks just got to get some nice good well-placed casts and we're going to catch some that's what it's all about too when you're fishing docks like this you have to make sure that you skip up underneath the dock i mean every once in a while you'll, you'll catch one flipping around the edges but usually these fish are going to be up in the shadiest most portion of the dock so you're going to want to zing that jig scoot that jig up way up underneath that dock and that's where you're going to get the biggest bite there he is oh yeah that's another good one that's another good bass right there. Got the, oh, and she threw it. <laughs> I was about to say she's got the finesse jig sticking on the outside of her face. She did not look like she was hooked too good. But that was another one right up in that really shady part of the dock. I just skipped it right up underneath there and she freaking cracked it. A lot of times on this dock bite too, you'll feel them on the way down. Like before you even get to move the jig, you'll just feel your line just go dunk or you'll see your line kind of start swimming off to the side. And that is kind of what happened with that one right there. But. Let me put a new craw trailer on here. This one's got a little bit tore up and uh, we're gonna get at it because we have a good little row. There's about three in a row here that look super juicy, a lot of shade cover, and we're gonna whack one. There he is. Oh, big one, big one, freaking giant one. Are we recording? Oh my gosh, dude. It's a freaking toad. That's the biggest bass I've ever caught in this lake in my life. Holy smokes. Let me get the net on this thing. Dude, that's a freaking tank right there. Come here, baby. Oh, I hit her in the net and then lost her. Dude, I don't even know what to begin to tell you guys right there. Uh, for this lake, that is an absolute freak. That's an absolute freak right there oh my gosh i don't even have the scale on the boat right there that's a four pounder though all day that's a four pounder all day long holy smokes okay hold on let me get the big camera on this one real quick okay uh dude i just caught an absolute freaking giant absolutely the biggest bass i've ever caught in this lake in my entire life the biggest bass i've ever caught in my entire life on this lake uh probably every bit of like 21 inches and she's pretty dang fat too i just put her in my live well so she's plenty good we're gonna get her back in the water quick but throwing that little heavy metal finesse jig up in about a foot of water but that is an absolute freaking nature we're gonna get her back in the lake i can't even believe that that just happened that's awesome all right on <laughs> that freaking finesse jig oh my gosh dude that's a tournament winner we've caught a winning tournament bag almost any single day on this lake a winning tournament bag uh with like a two and a half pounder a four something and then a couple other like two pounders just on real day just an unreal day and of course it happens when it's not a tournament because that's always when it happens 
but that's freaking awesome. I can't believe I wasn't more hyped up when I set hook on that fish. I should have been freaking out. That's the biggest bass I've ever seen caught in this lake. That's just unheard of, just unheard of. Okay, so like I was just saying guys, let me get back up to where I just caught that fish. That is the biggest bass I've ever caught in here in my entire life. Uh, I've probably been out on this lake 30, 40, 50 times. I don't even know, it's, it's not too far from my house and they have a lot of tournaments here. But a good four plus pounder right there and, and it was in about a foot or two of water, super shallow and the water temp's like in the mid 80s, low to, low to mid 80s. So middle of summer, got a freaking 85 degree scorcher out here and there are giant bass up shallow, munching on finesse jigs, but that is that Catchco heavy metal finesse jig. Check that thing out guys. It's another one of those baits that Catchco makes that I just can't say enough about. It's just freaking slaying bass. It's, it just caught my biggest bass in this lake and I fished it like 50 times. First time I ever tried that jig out. So throwing this around these docks, we're gonna try this for a little bit longer, see if we get any more absolute giants like that because that's just unreal. But I hope you guys are learning something. Uh, I'm definitely going to be super active down in this comment section too, so if you guys have any extra questions, uh, I will comment from my own personal channel, Bass and Bill 96, and try to get back to you guys. Uh, but it's been freaking phenomenal out here up shallow. The deep bite was a little sketchy, only caught a few, but uh, we moved up shallow and we're getting bit pretty frequently and by some freaking big ones. So stay tuned guys, let's go get some more big bass. Come here, baby. Come here. You ain't getting away like that. Up and in. Another little chunker. And it seems like these ones up shallow are all freaking stocky, too. I don't think that one was a keeper. That was about a 13 incher, but she was a fat one. But I think that that is going to be a good way to end it off here, guys. We have freaking whacked them. Let me just pull out the uh, old big camera and just give you guys a little outro. Kind of wrap up, summarize what was going on here today. Okay, so that ends one of the best days I've ever had on this lake in my entire life, as, as far as size goes at least. But we started with the finesse jig out deep. We caught quite a few fish. We just had to kind of find that key area uh, on that little offshore point and we started whacking them. Then we decided to go up shallow and start fishing some docks just to show you guys that the finesse jig works up shallow just as good as it works out deep, if not better. And uh, we caught an absolute freaking stud, but thank you guys for watching today's video and thank you for Mystery Tackle Box. Uh, it's really awesome whenever they let me take over this channel. I guess you guys really, really like that frog fishing videos. I know it blew up for them pretty good. Uh, thank you guys for watching today's video. I hope you guys learned a lot from these uh, finesse jig fishing tips. Uh, I had a great time making this video. I love fishing a finesse jig. I love fishing jigs pretty much everywhere that I go, but oh, that's a mouthful. A lot of you guys also said I talk too fast, so I'm gonna try to work on that. I just kind of go. So once again, thank you guys for watching. Uh, if you guys wanna check out my channel, that's gonna be linked down in the description below, I'm sure. But thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you guys in the next video.